G'day Marshmallows and welcome back to the Coco Couch. We are watching The Legend of Korra. I thought Avatar The Last Airbender was just the most phenomenal animated show I've ever seen. And not just the writing, the characters and all of that. I just thought that the concept of bending the elements and using them like a martial art is just such a cool concept. Just getting more content in a world where that is a reality, where they can bend the elements. I want more of that. I, I don't care. <laughs> I'm gonna have so much fun watching this show, I reckon. A lot of you guys have been saying that it's a bit of a mixed bag, this show, and that sometimes it's really good and sometimes it doesn't kind of live up to The Last Airbender, which I'm totally okay with. A lot of people were saying a lot of my questions in The Last Airbender are going to be answered throughout this show. This one is structured a little bit differently. There are four seasons and there are way less episodes in it. So I'm going to watch four episodes at a time. So we'll get through a season every three weeks, I think. If you guys haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. That will really help it grow. I want to see if I can get to 100,000 subscribers subscribers by the end of the year. I think that would be incredible. I mean, the community is just lovely. You guys are amazing. These are all up on Patreon. If you want to watch along with me, you do not need your own copy. I'm going to actually have it playing alongside me like I did with the Netflix avatar. Yeah, so jump on there and watch it along with me. Without further ado, let's jump into it. Oh. Earth. Fire. <laughs> Let's go! The Avatars! My father, Avatar Aang, told me the story of how he and his friends ended the Hundred Year War. Yeah, the Aang gang! A society where benders and non-benders all over the world would live and thrive wow. together in peace. <gasps> they named the capital of this great land, Public City. What?! No! His time in this world came to an end. He's got a statue?! The cycle of the Avatar began anew. That's incredible, he did that much. That's so cool, a whole city. I guess it has been a long time, right? All right, chapter one, welcome to Republic City. It's so cool, man. He really did usher an era of peace and unity. I'm so proud of him. White Lotus has honored my family by coming. Oh, they're still going strong. I've investigated many claims. All have turned out to be false. Then you should be happy to know your search has come to an end. Cora. Oh, okay. You gotta deal with it! I guess she is! <laughs> she could bend them all at that age? <laughs> okay, she's phenomenal. Shivers, man. She's kind of giving me Kyoshi vibes. She lacks restraint. She's a brilliant fighter, though. Woohoo! We should be celebrating. Three elements down, one to go. <laughs> You've excelled at the physical side of bending, completely ignored the spiritual side. Oh. It, it just doesn't come as easy to me. Do you believe she's ready, Master Katara? Yes. If anyone can teach her what she needs to learn, it's Tenzin. <laughs> she's still alive? It's time for you to begin your airbending training. Yes! Finally! I mean, <laughs> thank you all. <laughs> yes, thank you. I should have told by the hair loopies <laughs> and the necklace. I kicked some firebender butt and I passed. Oh, Tenzin will be here in a few days. It's like a giant polar bear dog. <laughs> That's so cute. So the vibe we're getting from her is she's very gifted physically, but spirituality is her struggle. Okay, I like that. It's kind of very opposite to Aang. Then again, Aang was like, what, 12 when he mastered them also. <laughs> As I've been telling you for the last 15 minutes, we're finally here. <laughs> Sucking on his bald head. <laughs> I can't tell you how happy I am to see you. Help me. <laughs> That's Aang's son. It's so good to see all of you. I love that they've had a prosperous family. Can we make a campfire and all huddle around it and tell scary stories? And then can you make the snowman move with waterbending and chase us? They're very much like Aang. <laughs> I see another airbender in your future. All I want is one child like me. He doesn't blast wind in my face every five seconds. Uh, that's very real. Were Tenzin and his siblings this crazy when they were kids? Kaya and Bumi certainly were. Tenzin has always been rather serious. Did Aang name one of his kids after Bumi? That's so cute. I'm so glad you're here. I can't wait to get started. I 
have to return to Republic City. No, you're supposed to move here. You're supposed to teach me. Your airbending training is going to have to wait. Dang, bro. Well, I mean, she's got her whole life out of her, right? I have a responsibility to Republic City. Situation there is very unstable right now. Believe me, I'd be happy to find another airbending master. You're the only one. Dang, that was nice. <laughs> Avatar Aang tasked us with keeping you safe. I don't think keeping me locked up in this compound is what he mm. had in mind. I actually agree with her. Mm -hmm. Then again, she's giving me like slightly arrogant vibes. Maybe not arrogance, but naivety, you know? Yeah, would it be good for her or not? I certainly don't think being cooped up here is a good idea though. I'm not gonna lie, I'd get pretty miserable living in the water tribe. <laughs> Nice night for an escape, isn't it? Oh, Katara knows. I have to find my own path as the Avatar. I know you do. Oh, I guess she did marry one. Your generation to take on the responsibility of keeping peace and balance in the world. You're going to be a great Avatar. Goodbye, Korra. That was wise, Katara, to just let it go like that. And to be like, our responsibility's over. Our, our journey's done. It's up to you guys. We love you so much. Shivers. All right. Hmm. Oh, their ships have gotten better. <laughs> they must be going through some sort of industrial revolution. Hey. Bro, she's jacked. <laughs> I guess you would be, right? If you've been doing martial arts pretty much since you were an infant. Whoa. Wow. Yeah, all the little blimps. Look at this place. This is a different show. <laughs> ah, there's your predecessor. The Great Aang. It's a lot to live up to though, isn't it? That's where Tenzin lives. You ready for a little swim, girl? <laughs> okay, okay. That's such a cute, like, what are, what are they called? Not a spirit guide, is it? <laughs> <laughs> we'll take one of everything, please. 20 you want. Uh, I don't have any money. Oh no. Shivers, girl, what do you think was gonna happen? I bet we can find a place to rustle up something to eat. I don't want to look into it, but maybe growing up she just didn't have to earn stuff like this since she's the avatar. I don't know. <laughs> I've only just started this. Think I can get one of them tasty smelling fishies? Yeah, sure. <laughs> okay. Took me a while to procure a bush that beauteous. There are a lot of you out here? Hey, you got a lot to learn, newcomer. Yeah, for sure. You can't fish here. You best get out of- Mate, already getting yourself in trouble. Are you tired of living under the tyranny of benders? Join the equalists. Bending is the coolest thing in the world. Girl! This is what's wrong with the city. Benders like this girl only mm. use her power to oppress us. She did not handle that well. I'm not oppressing anyone. <laughs> you're, you're oppressing yourself. <laughs> you're oppressing yourself. That's real. <laughs> I totally get that though. Please tell me that you have my money. Please take one of my phonographs. Dude. Give me the money or else. There's the bending that's oppressing people. Far out. You're in triple threat triad territory. We're about to put you in the hospital. You're the only ones who are gonna need a hospital. I hope there's one nearby. <gasps> She's just starting fights. <laughs> this is hilarious. <gasps> Whoa. Did she just earth bend? Sure did. Can she fire Ben too? Could she be? There's no other explanation. Girl, stop destroying things. Got an idea about who I am now, chumps? Oh boy. I have a bad feeling about this. <laughs> Cora! Yeah, she's gonna get in trouble for this. Oh, who are these? Oh! Cool. Metal benders. More metal benders? And her. You're under arrest too. Well, yeah, duh. <laughs> Property damage. Oh, mate. This is this is fun. I like this. Wait, you you can't arrest me. Ooh. Mate, they're dangerous, aren't they? Oh. Oh. 
Oh, that's, oh, that's rude, man. <laughs> She's not very good at keeping a low profile, isn't she? of destruction of private and city property tough you're in a whole mess of trouble young lady it's my duty to help people to create peace actually <laughs> i am well aware of who you are avatar title might impress some people but not me i'm chief Beifong. Beifong? Beifong? Your top star. Oh, yeah. I love it. Avatar Aang and your mother were friends. It's got diddly squat to do with the mess you're in right now. <laughs> and Tuff didn't roll over for Aang either. <laughs> Councilman Tenzin is here. <sighs> Let him in. That's so cool she established the police. I got a little sidetracked on my way to see you. <laughs> Lynn, you are looking radiant as usual. Cut the garbage, Tenzin. Ooh! I will take full responsibility for today's regrettable events. Cover all the damages. Fine. <laughs> the way she undid her handcuffs. <laughs> oh my gosh, the energy. Mm. So different to Aang. She said my destiny is in Republic City. Don't bring my mother into this. Whoa. <laughs> Being cooped up and hidden away from the world isn't helping me become a better avatar. Republic City does need you, but it needs me too. She's gonna have to learn fast though, like social cues and stuff. The first thing she needs to learn is peace is the priority. <laughs> Fighting isn't gonna get peace, you know, not every time. It's necessary sometimes, but. Are you coming to live with us on the island? I'm sorry, Iki. I have to go home now. She's not. <laughs> Otherwise we wouldn't get a show. It has fallen out of balance since he passed. I thought I should put off your training in order to uphold his legacy, but you are his legacy. Whoa. May stay and train airbending here with me. Thank you. You're the best. Hey! Whoa, she's strong. Is that like an Avatar Kyoshi sort of thing? Like she's just stronger than an average person? Not just because she's bulky, but because she's the Avatar? Is that a thing? Your new Avatar. Dang. Were you trying to send a message to the triad? Will you be working with Chief Bei Fong and the police? Yeah, this was not a good idea. Avatar Aang meant for this city the center of peace and balance in the world. I believe we can make his dream a reality. Nice. That was a good speech. The Avatar has arrived early. Looks like we'll have to accelerate our plans. Oh boy, here we go. Mate, that was a pretty awesome intro, if you ask me. I thought that that was really good. Uh, <laughs> there's a lot to talk about, considering it was the first episode. I, I really love the take that they're going with on this new Avatar. I like that it's so different to the first one. I like that she almost seems like this hothead, very naive, but also very gifted avatar. And it's funny because initially I was like, oh, that's a little bit strange. She's so like, it, it's almost like she could just bend straight away so easily. But that makes sense to me. I mean, Aang was a prodigy as well, right? I mean, he got all four elements mastered. Well, maybe not mastered, but competent, you know, enough. Um, in the first year of basically coming back, which was just incredible to me. So it totally makes sense that Korra, by the time she's what, I'm assuming she's probably 17 or 18 here. Uh, it, it makes sense that she's already mastered three of the elements. And I love that airbending is the one that she hasn't done yet. That's it's so satisfying that she's just so opposite to Aang. It's just such a brilliant way to go about it. And for her to rock up to Republic City and to be all like, oh, I, I want to fight. Like, let's <laughs> let's take you guys down. It's, it's showing me uh, that maybe even her journey throughout this entire show is going to be so reversed compared to Aang, right? Aang was a peacemaker that avoided conflict and didn't really want to uphold his responsibility as the Avatar. He just kind of, at worst, he wanted to run away. And at best... He, he, um, he was able to fight for the ones he loved, right? Where it seems like Korra, at her worst, is f always fighting. And maybe at her best, she's a peacemaker who tries her best to avoid conflict and to make really wise choices. Uh, that's just kind of the, the gist I'm getting from just that one episode. I love that she's opposite to Aang and that she's this hothead, arrogant person. 
to me, honestly, as much as it can be frustrating, those sorts of characters are so endearing. Uh, like, uh, she's kind of reminded me of Anakin Skywalker, not gonna lie. I know that's a weird comparison, but that's the only character I can think of that I've grown up with that uh, has a similar sort of um, path, if that makes sense. I'm very excited to see what's gonna happen. I love that she's surrounded by so many people from Aang's life. We, she was basically raised with Katara, which is just wonderful. Katara is such a brilliant example. And on top of that, she's got what, Tenzin is his name, who's uh, the son of Aang. Aang had a few kids, that's what, I, what I've heard. Uh, and Tenzin is gonna train her, which I think is so cool. It's a shame because you don't want to face the reality, I guess, that Aang is gone because he was such an incredible character and I wanted to see more of him. I wanted to see him grow up, you know? What was he like as a man being the Avatar? That's what I'm, but that's what I wanted. Um, but you know, it's, you can't have a new Avatar unless the last one's dead, right? <laughs> that's just how it works. So, uh, yeah, it's crazy how much the world's changed since the first one. And it's also very comforting to know that just having peace throughout the world and having the four nations work together is what's ushered in this age of industrial revolutions and stuff like that. Which is really interesting to me because throughout history, we've gone through the most progress because of war. The Hundred Year War probably in, uh, fueled innovation and the peace era afterwards probably helped nurture um, you know, those inventions and turn those things for good, right? Since you saw those blimps and the, and all that sort of stuff, the thing that soccer technically uh, invented from the start, which is just incredible to see his legacy still carrying on and stuff like that. Uh, I am so excited to see what happens here. Uh, I'm gonna stop talking and just see what happens. <laughs> so let's go on to episode two. Only the Avatar can master all four elements and bring balance to the world. Dang, is that the intro for every episode? Chapter two, A Leaf in the Wind. I love that this is taking so much inspiration from, uh, uh, what was the time period? <laughs> what do you say we go to the arena tonight? Catch a few pro bending matches. That sport is a mockery of the noble tradition of bending. Oh. You're here to finish your avatar training. In order to learn air bending, I believe you require a calm, quiet environment. Makes sense, I guess. Bending is kind of sacred, isn't it? It's a martial art. But then again, you see tournaments of martial arts today. <laughs> You've never been able to airbend before. The other elements came so easily to me. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> For Aang, it was earthbending. Well, I'm about as opposite an airbender as you can get. Hmm. The goal is to weave your way through the gates and make it to the other side without touching them. Oh, wow. That looks impossible. <laughs> The key is to be like the leaf, flow with the movement of the gates. That seems pretty advanced though. Air bending is all about spiral movements. You must be able to switch direction at a moment's notice. Sounds like water bending philosophy. Let's do this. <laughs> and you wonder why you can't air bend. <laughs> Stop facing things like you always have with force. Don't force your way through. Damn. <laughs> it's alright, this is day one. Airbend. Oh, maybe I'm just not cut out to be an airbender. You're the avatar, you have to. This next match is gonna be a doozy. Clock is winding down. Can Yomo hold off? The fire line up the strike. <gasps> Cora, come down here, please. Oh, I don't want you listening to this distracting nonsense. You said I couldn't watch a match and say anything about listening to one. You... <laughs> anyway, shouldn't, shouldn't you be in bed by now? He's like, I hate teenagers. I think I'm doing it wrong. Let your mind and your spirit be free. You're telling me to embrace freedom, but you won't even let me listen to the radio? Ooh, she got him there. He's able to meditate peacefully. I think he's asleep. At least he has the relaxing part down. Mm, I think maybe you need to train her differently, perhaps. She needs a good reason to master air, I think. She needs to kind of find some sort of motivation or a goal. Otherwise, she just doesn't care, right? That's half the issue here. Oh, that's what Aang did with his fight with uh, Ozai. Hey, oh, I can't imagine what that'd be like to train an avatar that's 
in their late teens. <laughs> He's so challenging. It's honestly so cool seeing an avatar almost mastered all four elements already. What are you doing in my gym? The old I had to pee excuse. I'm taking you to security. I've been looking everywhere for you. Yeah, I'm with him. So, you see, we're together. Not together together, more like friends. <laughs> Ooh, right this way, miss. <laughs> Seriously, thanks. Making friends already? Whoa. Unbelievable. Bolin. Yeah, you have to stop bringing your crazy fangirls in here before the match. <laughs> Marco, isn't that the guy on the radio that they're talking about? I want you to meet my brother, Marco. Wow, I, I heard you play on the radio. Or I could meet him later. This is so cool. It's like uh, the episode with Tough, right? The blind bandit. A fire ferret! <laughs> the rookie ferret. <laughs> <laughs> they face their toughest test yet, folks. The two teams Whoa. waste no time. Asuk is the first to feel the heat of the Tiger Dillon. Ah! Mako showcases his trademark cool under fire style. Nice. Ugh. Oh, the Tiger Dillo scores. Shivers. Teammate hold on to their zone one territory. All right, this guy's good. The Tiger Dillos get the green light and advance into ferret territory. Oh, I see. I love games like this. Dang, bro. Assuming the fabulous Bending Brothers can hold their ground until the next round. Come on, the fabulous Bending Brothers. Come on, so get your act together. This is so cool seeing them operate like one unit, the Avatar. Woo! Get him. The comeback of the century. And now he tunnels right into his teammate. Ooh. He and quick if they don't want to. Oh! Dang it, you dummies. <laughs> I can see why this is so fun to watch. Bobbing and weaving. He is dancing on the edge of the rings. Plan is working. They've got nothing left in the tank. <laughs> it's two on one. There's so much smoke and dust from the fight. Whoa. Okay, that guy is a prodigy. Winning the match for the fire ferret. Dang. Ah. Yeah, she's going to be like, damn. You almost cost us the match. Get off my case, pal. Ooh. You guys were incredible out there. You're still here. Oh, you're still a jerk. Woo! I never learned how to move like that. I think you could show me a few tricks. Mm. Absolutely. She could replace the guy. Mm -hmm. Except that wouldn't really be fair, though. I'm a waterbender and a firebender. She loves toying with people. You're the avatar and I'm an idiot. Oaths are true. Yep. Good power. In a real match, you'd be a sitting turtle duck. Stay light on your toes, right up until the moment, and strike. Then... Right. I like that. Be light on your feet, but when you attack, then it's like, plant your feet. It's almost like you have to be like an airbender. Mm. I think I'm gonna turn in. You kids have fun. Nice to meet you, Avatar Korra. Been a real pleasure. <laughs> Yeah, that's the problem with doing all that work, right? You just don't want to do the stuff that actually matters. Girl! Those are relics! Oh my gosh. 2,000 year old historical treasure. Yeah! What is wrong with you? Maybe the problem isn't me. You're a terrible teacher! <sighs> Far out. Yeah, you're a terrible teacher, Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and it's these two girls hug. Oh, that was beautiful. That was so cute. <laughs> like, it's okay, Dad. We love you. Honestly, Pema, I am at my wit's end with that girl. I, I don't know how to get through to her. You must promise me that your teenage years won't be like this. I will make no such promises. <laughs> yeah, honestly, right? This looks a no good, no show. You got two minutes to come out ready to play. How about me? I'm a top-notch waterbender. Isn't that cheating? It isn't cheating if I only do waterbending. Hmm. You can thank me later. This girl is crazy. They're already gonna hit it off. I just know it. <laughs> it's like an enemies to friends thing. Enemies to lovers, maybe. Don't do anything. Just try not to get knocked off the ring. Oh! Penalty. Move back one zone. You're only allowed to knock players off the back of the yeah. ring. Yeah. Not over the side. Good job. <laughs> the platypus bears know a green player when they see one. Focusing the front of their bending on this poor girl. She took that, though. <laughs> 
Oh gosh, man. Cora! I think this replacement player could be She's not in her room. You gotta be kidding me. She's the <laughs> avatar. <laughs> the timing. You believe that? <laughs> I'll get her myself. <laughs> oh no. The avatar will be permitted to continue as long as she solely bends water. That's fair. Isn't she stronger though? They're giving her their best. And her best ain't good enough. And she's in the drink. Dang, Cora. It's not so easy, is it? Ooh. Oh, bet you didn't like coming to these matches. She's gonna feel his wrath. Clearly, the only thing you respond to is force, ordering you to come back to the temple right now. So I can sit around and meditate about how bad I am at airbending? Maybe I don't even need it. Oh. The Avatar needs to learn airbending. It is not optional. When will you learn that? I have a match to go finish. Yeah, they both matter. Like, she is right, but he's more right. <laughs> It's only a matter of time before- Hold the phone! She's still in the game, folks! What is she doing? All of a sudden, the platypus bear strikes her up. She's moving like an airbender! How about that? Come on! <laughs> she was right! Are you kidding me? This did help! Oh, That's the avatar right there. Come on! Let's go! <laughs> Compose yourself. And not believe it. Way to go. You really came alive in that last round. But I can't take all the credit. Yeah. That's interesting, eh? Like, they're both right. <laughs> I was really frustrated with myself. I took it out on you. I think I owe you an apology, too. You were really good out there tonight. You moved just like an airbender. Pro bending turned out to be the perfect teaching tool for you. Oh. <laughs> I kind of permanently joined the Fire Ferrets and we're playing in the tournament in a couple of weeks. <sighs> yeah, compromise. That's how you're gonna help teach her, right? Oh, dude. Is that what I think it is meant to mean? I mean, obviously he's just looking off in the distance, right? But I don't know, that was just really interesting. Maybe he's just, I don't know, he might be crushing. <laughs> I think Tenzin was mostly right, hey, but it's interesting that they went with Korra kind of being right as well. I think it was a very complicated situation, right? I think her abandoning her teaching and going off and doing something reckless was, you know, very questionable. And the fact that she ended up being right in the end, it helped her with her airbending. Uh, it's almost rewarding, <laughs> that sort of rebellious behavior. But... Hey, I mean, we got some results, so who cares? Yeah, it's. It, I like that Tenzin isn't the perfect teacher either. It's almost like they're on two opposite uh, journeys. He has to almost learn as a master to make changes and adapt to his student, right? Instead of having such a dogmatic approach to teaching. Like, everything has to be done this certain way. He has to make changes. Kind of like... Uh, Po with Master Shifu in Kung Fu Panda, right? He's got to adapt a little bit to this new student, uh, which is uh, which is interesting because I feel like the avatar represents change uh, and peace, right? So it's almost like everyone that interacts with Korra uh, is going to have to, in some way, change in their life, which is, I think that's kind of cool. Yeah, anyway, on to episode three. An anti-bending revolution brews in Republic City. What nefarious plan does mm. the mysterious man behind the mask have in store for our hero? Chapter three, the revelation. I totally get if non-benders felt like they had a disadvantage. I wonder what they're going to do with that concept. What's the big idea with making me train this early in the morning? Morning is evil. <laughs> I'm the opposite. It's an honor to finally meet you, Avatar. Boo Taka. Boo Taka? Here's your winnings from the last match. The first you owe me for the Avatar's new gear, rent on your apartment, and the personal loan for groceries. What the hell? The fire ferrets need to ante up 30,000 yuan for the championship pot. You got till the end of the week to come up with the dough, or else you're out of the tournament. That's crazy. Ever since we lost our parents, we've been on our own. I didn't know. So, anyway, how are we gonna come up with the money? I've been training Pabu to do circus tricks. Now people would pay good money to see that. We need serious ideas. I was serious. Oh, He's kind of the comic relief, isn't he? He's like sucker. Narratively speaking, that's his role. I'm assuming. Big finish, buddy. Stick the landing. 
Damn. Nice. One you want down. Twenty nine thousand nine hundred and ninety nine. Twenty nine thousand. Oh gosh, man. I got an offer for you. Oh. Lightning bolt Zolt can to hire some extra muscle. Here comes a sketchy job. Mako told me to stay away from the triple threats. Your brother ain't the boss of you. <gasps> oh, that's pretty hard to refuse, though, right? Uh, what, people can just lightning bend willy nilly? <sighs> Shivers, mate. You'd have to be pretty steadfast in, like, you know, your beliefs and stuff like that. Because don't you have to have, like, peace of mind? Good, light on your feet. Nice. She's getting it. Ooh, he's cute. Is that the handsome firebender boy that drives you crazy? Oh, or do you drive me crazy like you like him? He's like a bad boy vibe. <laughs> Bolin has a knack for getting into stupid situations. Wait, I could help you look for him. Nah, I got it. We can take Naga. Who's Naga? My best friend. I knew this would happen. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, that's gotta be Zuko, right? It did have a scar in his face, right? This is his usual hangout. <laughs> you guys seen my brother around here today? My memory is a little foggy. Oh wow, you little hustler. A real pro. Yeah, I seen him. Performing some kind of monkey rat circus. Shady Shin showed up and flashed some serious cash. Yep. Sounds like there's a turf war brewing, and Bolin's about to get caught right in the middle of it. I like that Cora gave him a weird look when he was bribing him, basically. Yet, you know, that kid has to do what he has to do to survive. Why would Bolin get tangled up with- Whoa, Naga! Oh! That's his, uh, animal thing. That's Pablo! No, oh. Naga! <laughs> we gotta hurry. I'd love to have a polar bear dog. That'd be so cute. We better be cautious. She's like, I'm the avatar. Yeah. <laughs> this girl, man. Ooh. Oh, well, that ain't good. Man, it's a shame you can't do an airbending slice. <laughs> Mate, what sort of trouble did he get himself into? Whoa. All right. Holy moly! The whole team's like hard to take down. Oh <gasps> no! Oh shivers! Was her name Ty Lee? Oh mate, these non-benders, man, they know how to fight. Yeah, come on. <laughs> Shivers. I can't bend. Calm down. It'll wear off. They're a mon's henchmen. We are going to save your brother. I promise you that. Chi blockers. Goodness me. Like, it's pretty rare in the first show. Very dangerous ability. I'm not going to lie. If I was born into a world like this and I didn't have a bending, I would learn chi blocking. Like that just as a martial art of like self-defense. I ran into an equalist protester over there. <laughs> Why is Bolin running around with a triple threat triad anyway? We used to do some work for them back in the day. What, are you some kind of criminal? No. Whoa. I just ran numbers for them and stuff. We were orphans out on the street. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, come on. What happened to your parents? They were mugged by a firebender. I was eight. Mako. Bolin's the only family I have left. Oh. Equality now! We want equality now! Ja! Uh. <laughs> it's gonna happen. It's time for the- <laughs> My friend got kidnapped by some chi blockers. Where'd they take him? Oh. Witness the revelation tonight, nine o'clock. Nothing that concerns the likes of you two. <laughs> it does. What's going on over there? The avatars are pressing us. Help! <laughs> the avatars are pressing us. Why didn't the equalists put a location on these? Probably because they don't want just anyone waltzing into their big revelation. There's four different images. Oh, it's a map. Why would they put a puzzle of a map on the, all their flyers? Like, honestly, what's the point? <laughs> Seems very convenient. I hope we go to places outside Republic City eventually. 
Don't get me wrong, this place is big, but I kind of liked that they went to all these different places in nature. We'll attract less attention this way. No one gets in without an invitation. You mean this? The revelation is upon us, my brother and sister. That's all you needed? Damn, all right. I knew a lot of people hated Benders, but I've never seen so many in one place. Holy moly. What, well, these people don't just like not like them. They hate Benders. I guess the issue though is they're good and bad people, bending or not, right? So people would only focus on the bad benders, hey? Thinking bending's the problem, not the people? My family and I lived on a small farm. This made us very easy targets for the firebender who extorted my father. My father confronted this man. That firebender took my family from me. He took my face. Yeah, there's always some sort of reason. The Avatar has recently arrived in Republic City. <laughs> She's in the room! Careful! The only thing Bending has brought to the world, suffering, has been the cause of every war. There'd be war regardless. The spirits have acted as guardians of our world. They say the Avatar has failed humanity. Whoa! To usher in a new era of balance. They have granted me a power to take a person's Bending away. Uh... Is that like what we saw? Energy bending, right? One of the most notorious criminals in Republic City. And I'm assuming his spirit is unbendable, right? Since he's got that conviction. I will give Zolt the chance to fight to keep his bending. You're gonna regret doing that, pal! Oh my gosh. Whoa! Holy moly. <laughs> See how destructive it is. Yep, yep, I knew it. He really did energy bend. That's crazy. What? what did you do to me? How did he get that skill? A new era of equality has begun. Yikes, it always starts with good intention, right? Getting equality, but it's just gone too far again. They're powered by water and steam. Create some cover. I can grab Olin without anyone seeing. Good luck. You too. It's all about balance, isn't it? That's the whole thing with nature and the spirits in this world. Dang, bro. This is horrible seeing this happen. I hope this guy doesn't lose his bending. What are you doing back here? Looking for the bathroom? <laughs> yeah, good luck, mate. Oh, nice. Come on, please. I think there's been a big misunderstanding. Hey. Come on, Ari! <laughs> Come on! <laughs> nice. <sighs> About time. Uh, uh, nice. Yes, Mako! I love you! <laughs> Best brother ever! No! Oh! Wasn't expecting that. Come on. It's easy if you bend the floor around him. <laughs> Shivers, man. Come on, guys. Ah, that's what I mean by bending the floor around him, because he can't dodge that. <laughs> yeah, because he's never seen this before. Let her go. She's the perfect messenger to tell the city of my power. Oh no, yeah, he's gonna twist this, isn't he? I was just about to send out a search party, are you all right? I saw Amon. What? He can take people's bending away. Only the Avatar has ever possessed that ability. I don't know how Amon has achieved this power, but this means the revolution is more dangerous than ever. Yeah, but that is what it must feel like though to be a non-bender though, right? I know that's not the point, but you know, they, they shouldn't take people's bending away from them. But I guess that's what the irony is, right? It's, they just feel powerless like everyone else. But yeah, it's not the way you solve an issue like that. The Avatar is meant to bring balance to the world. And uh, that means having benders and non-benders. Otherwise, you know, it's too skewed to one side. And I guess that would be the problem with trying to breed, you know, a perfect <laughs> race of benders too. It's It's just so out of balance. It really does make the Avatar's job seem so impossible. The amount of things they have to keep in control and balance in the world is just insane to me. 
And, you know, the fact that the responsibility is up to essentially a child is just... It's crazy to me. I mean, Aang was meant to be uh, an exception to the rule, right? He got told when he was young because there was a war upon them. But somehow Korra just knew how to bend a few of the elements since she was an infant, which is just another crazy scenario. So both Aang and Korra are similar in the sense that they're both got these huge responsibilities put upon them when they haven't really matured yet they haven't become adults uh and i think on top of that both ang and cora have different sort of immaturity issues where like ang was like a child and as much as he was very wise with some things like uh respecting the spiritual world and culture and religion and stuff like that. He was immature in the sense that he didn't really take responsibility for things. He liked to run away. You know, he liked to have too much fun. And, uh, but Cora, it's almost like, you know, she's a teenager. It's like all the <laughs> hormones and everything's all over the place. And to amplify that, you know, she's grown up pretty isolated uh, from the world. So she's got all these, she's such a hothead and you know her her emotional state's probably fluctuating so much it's yeah it's you know they both have their own challenges and uh i think grace is needed for her because you know at the end of the day she's just a teenager she's got all this responsibility she's never seen the outside world before and uh yeah it's pretty pretty crazy <laughs> I, f I feel so i feel sorry for her uh and I think that she's probably going to have to fail a lot to, to learn these lessons, unfortunately. Uh, because failure is the greatest teacher, as Master Yoda put it. <laughs> All right, on to episode four. Air. Water. It's so cool. Looks like that airbender. I think it's Aang is break dancing. Chapter four, the voice in the night. All right. Is this going to be some spirit world shenanigans? <laughs> oh, shivers. Uh, is this actually happening? Ah! Uh, it must be a nightmare. You will be nothing. <laughs> yeah, dreams speaking to your psyche. Probably bases so much of her self-worth on her bending. Makes sense though, right? If you, you know, you know that you're the avatar from such a young age, you're gonna... We need to create a task force. Find Amon and bring him to justice. Mm. Absolutely not. Only further divide benders and non-benders. <laughs> It would be my honor. This is just another one of your ploys to gain more power, isn't it? Republic City was threatened by another dangerous man, Kone. Your father wasn't afraid to deal with him head on. How dare you compare yourself to Avatar Aang? All in favor? Dang, dude. Come on. If you're on the council, you should see right through that. That just seemed like such a selfish, like, ploy there. <laughs> The Republic Council has voted to make me public enemy number one. Our numbers grow stronger by the day. The time has come for benders to experience fear. Whole life, her worth is based on her bending. That would be terrifying. <laughs> Watch where you're going! So sorry, I didn't see you. How could you not see me? I mean, I was just... Ha <laughs> ha! Yep. <laughs> it's fine if a gorgeous girl does it. <laughs> I, wow. <laughs> Did I hurt you? Oh, I'm such an idiot. My brother hits me harder than that every day in practice. You're Mako, right? I am so embarrassed. <laughs> I'm so embarrassed. I'll make this up to you somehow. How about I treat you to dinner? Oh my Tomorrow gosh. Night, eight o'clock? I don't have any clothes nice enough for a place that classy. All you need to do is show up. It's a date? Uh, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Hey, I need to walk out into traffic more. <laughs> we are grateful for this delicious food and- I'm not interrupting, am I? Oh, I hate you, mate. You're so annoying. We're about to eat dinner. I am absolutely famished. Airbenders never turn away a hungry guest. What a disgusting character. Why do you have three ponytails? And how come you smell like a lady? You're weird. <laughs> You're weird. Infiltrating Amon's rally. Now oh, that took some real initiative. Oh, don't turn her against- her master. Enough with Don't. the flattery, Tarlock. I am assembling a task force that will strike at the heart of the revolution. I want you to join me. Really? This is ridiculous. Join your task force? 
Cora, don't. I can't. I wonder if she's making that choice though out of fear, not respect to her master. That's the problem. I, I thought you'd jump at the chance to help me lead the charge against Amon. You'll be hearing from me soon. It has been a pleasure. It's a shame you can't assemble a task force that doesn't have bending, so that it's less, uh, it causes less trouble, right? It doesn't look as bad. Welcome to Kwong's Cuisine, Master Marco. Damn. This girl's really, uh, dressing this guy up. The scarf stays. Yeah, you gotta have a signature, you know? I caught all of your matches this season. All of them. I can't wait to see you play in the tournament. It just isn't in the cards for us right now. Tell me, what's the problem? Whoa. We don't have the cash to ante up for the championship pot. Pardon me, Miss Sato. You wouldn't happen to be related to Hiroshi Sato, creator of the Sato Mobile? He's my dad. Get out of town. You want to meet him? Yeah, I'll take you up on that. As long as you still make it all about her, though. <laughs> don't get too distracted. Reason I came by was to give you this. Ta-da. What's this for? Uh, you saved me from a mom. <laughs> I will take away your bending forever. Yeah, don't give her PTSD, man. Delivery for Avatar Korra. Tarlock sends his compliments and urges you to reconsider. Dang. Who's this Tarlock guy? Is he bothering you? Is this guy interested or is he just a really, like, loyal friend? You know, just really kind. It's very impressive, Mr. Sato. I understand you're dirt poor. Uh... When I was your age, I was a mere shoe shiner. What is it about Marco that they want? It seems a little bit strange. He gave me the money I needed to get my idea off the ground. Now I'd hate to see you lose your chance at winning the championship. Hmm. I'm going to sponsor the fire ferrets in the tournament. Are you serious? Okay, but why do you want to help him? You all have to wear the Future Industries logo on your uniform. I'll tattoo it on my chest if you want, sir. <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe he's just a really nice, successful guy. I see Tarlock's gifts are getting more and more extravagant. She's moving like Aang. It's cool. Why don't you take a break? I just wanted to make sure your decision was for the right reason. It's okay to be scared. The whole city is frightened by what's been going on. Yeah, exactly. Talk about our fears. Mm -hmm. Because if we don't, it can throw us out of balance. She's probably never had fears before. That's the thing. <laughs> Not used to. I'm always here for you if you want to talk. Good job, man. He knows when to give us space, but also just drop the hints. Harlock is throwing a gala in your honor. The councilman humbly requests your attendance. Hmm. It's not like him to throw a party just for the fun of it. Exactly. If you'll excuse us, the city awaits its hero. Dang, so rude. Just neglected him. It's lovely to meet you. Mako told me so much about you. Because he hasn't mentioned you at all. Ooh, the jealousy. We're back in the tournament. <laughs> Isn't that great? Terrific. Chief Beifong, I believe you and Avatar- Mate, everyone's here. Just because the city's throwing you this big to do, don't think you're something special. Whoa. Okay, chill out. I know she's stuffed up, but I thought bygones be bygones. They just have a couple questions. Here we go, here starts the... Avatar Korra, how serious a threat does he pose to the innocent citizens of Republic City? Confidence. He presents a real problem. Why have you refused to join Tarlock's task force? From oh. Well, I... Why are you backing away from this fight? Throw her under the bus. Do you think Probenin is more important than fighting the revolution? Are you afraid of Amon? I'm not afraid of anybody. I'll join Tarlock's task force and help fight Amon. <sighs> Far out, man. That's so sad. Just manipulated essentially a child. <laughs> so wrong. Tonight we will execute a raid on an underground chi blocker training camp. There is a cellar underneath this bookstore. I wouldn't even trust like the police force. There could be people inside, you know? I don't know. <laughs> I've seen it happen too many times. Oh, that's bait. Eesh. I got a bad feeling about this. Holy moly. I'm going after those two. That is dangerous, man. Whoa. We make a good team, Avatar. It's a good thing they're quick. Hmm. 
Republic City has nothing to fear from Amon and the Equalus. Amon is hiding in the shadows like a coward. Amon, I challenge you to a duel. Dang. Tonight at midnight on Avatar Aang Memorial Island. Mate, she got over her fear quickly. Instead, she's replaced it with anger, though. Why didn't you accept the new silk scarf I bought for you last week? That's from his mom, maybe? This scarf was my father's. Oh, close. <laughs> like it keeps me safe. I'm so sorry. I lost my mother when I was very young. Aww. I feel so safe with you. It's kind of cute. <laughs> Came out of left field, but it's nice. This is all you're doing. I tried to talk her out of it too, but- No, you manipulated her into this situation. If anything goes wrong, I have a fleet of police airships ready to swoop down. Is this guy working with them as a bender though? And he's trying to get rid of the avatar? Hope not. I hope I'm wrong. <laughs> That's what I do when I'm preparing for something. Ah! <sighs> uh. Oh! Oh, you're done. You're done. She walked right into this one. Just like a dream. Oh no! Our showdown, while inevitable, is premature. You'd only become a martyr. I have a plan. You'll get your duel. I will destroy you. Oh, gosh. Oh. Oh, oh, far out, mate. That's evil, man. Just strike fear in her heart. Uh, the Aang gang? Was Amon here? Y yeah. Did he take your bending away? Yeah. The nightmare is over. You were right. I've been scared this whole time, and I don't know what to do. Admitting your fears <laughs> is the first and most difficult step in overcoming them. Yeah. Mate, it's just too much, man. It's just, that's awful. That's just, oh, you've been isolated your whole life, and then you come to this new place, and then all of a sudden, everything that gave you value, taken away from you in an instant. <laughs> You can't do anything. And then this guy's just like, I'm just, yeah, I could take everything away from you, but I won't just yet. Just strike more fear in her heart. Oh, it's awful, man. I hope she doesn't suffer throughout the next few episodes, you know, before this supposed showdown. Gosh, man. It's a shame too, because airbending is the most practical for um, evading. And I imagine self-defense. The whole style and all the bending that she knows is so off offensive, which is, yeah, it's just not gonna help you with people like that. They're just too good. That was a great first like four episodes of Legend of Korra. I, yeah, no, I think it's really good. I'm enjoying it so far. I think compared to the first few episodes of uh, The Last Airbender, I'm, I'm much more engaged this one. I'm much more roped into what is happening. And I think that is largely based on the fact that the universe has already been like built and I'm already invested a lot in uh, the concepts and what is happening in the world. So I feel like I've already got momentum from the end of The Last Airbender going straight into The Legend of Korra, which I think is uh, a lot of the reason why I'm so into this already. Yeah, and I, I do feel like the stakes were a lot lower at the start of The Last Airbender. They were introducing new concepts. I mean, when I think of the first episode of The Last Airbender, I, I imagine Aang saying, do you want to go penguin sledding with me? And then they just go penguin sledding. You know, that's kind of was the tone of the first couple episodes. That is crazy though. Like the whole chi blocking thing, uh, as well as, you know, energy bending. Like I was explaining, I, you know, she's been isolated her whole life. And a lot of her self-worth is built on the fact that she's the avatar and that she can bend all the elements. Yeah, I just wonder, uh, what her journey is going to look like based on that fact because as much as she's accepted her fear of you know losing her bending uh he, what is Tenzin said that that's the first step there are a lot of steps involved with getting over a fear that deeply rooted in my heart I think one of the best things for her would be to try to see what her life would look like as the avatar, even without her bending, like what those responsibilities entail, um, you know, bringing balance and 
connecting to the spirit world. Yeah, I, I honestly want the best for Cora already. I know I've only known her for four episodes. I feel differently to her than I do with Aang. I feel like as much as Aang was younger, even though he had Katara and Sokka and Appa and Momo, um, initially, right? I just felt more trusting almost. I felt like I could trust the journey where this one feels a bit more unpredictable. I have a sense of wanting to like protect Cora. I think a lot of that has to do with her being so naive and you know, just really aggressive. I think that makes me honestly a bit more attached. I want her to be okay, <laughs> which I think is a good thing. I think that was the intention the writers wanted. They wanted the audience to feel more empathy towards her situation. Being 24, you know, being in your teen years wasn't that long ago. <laughs> <laughs> so I understand her mentality with a lot of these things. You know, her arrogance in certain situations. It's very relatable. I, I hope that things go all right. But as for just the show in general, great world building. I think they've done a great job at making this feel like it's so far in the future. Like, what was it? 70 years or something like that? A long time. That is a flippin' long time. Yeah, so I'm, I'm not surprised that things have changed so much and the show feels so different tonally. They introduced the concept of the fighting, uh, the tournaments. I thought that was really cool. I like the two characters, Marco and, oh no, I forgot the other guy's name, <laughs> his brother. And I really do like Tenzin. I like that he's a very flawed sort of master and that he's going through his own struggles. Uh, my only issue with him, it's not so much a writing problem, it's more just like a character flaw, is his dogmatic view of airbending sort of philosophy and being a monk it, it's seeming to it's starting to look like a bit of a liability sometimes i mean i know he has good intentions but to see him allow that guy to come into his home and you know interrupt his family having dinner together because that was rude apparently for monks to reject someone uh i think it shows that he's very um He's very tied down to those beliefs and he's a slave to it almost, which is not good. Uh, he should learn from the Avatar uh, about balance, right? What I liked about the end of The Last Airbender was some of those ideas that the Avatar is, um, as much as Aang was a monk, he's an Avatar first. And as the Avatar, his ideas and um, his philosophy is going to be a little bit different to those of a monk. And I think Tenzin needs to take inspiration from Aang in that sense. He needs to know when to say no and, uh, you know, stand his ground and not be um, completely married to his beliefs like that. He needs to be more adaptable. Uh, and that's why I think it's so cool, the idea of learning different philosophies from the different, like, elements um, is they teach you how to be a more well-rounded individual. And I think a master at any of those elements will, like Iroh, um, will know how to adopt all those different philosophies into their life to become a more well-rounded person. And uh, yeah, I, I like that, that side of Tenzin, that he's kind of, he, I don't know, we'll see. Maybe he'll go through some sort of character growth there too. I'm loving this show. I'm a fantastic time. I think four episodes is a good pace for me. I felt like that wasn't too much. It was enough to process. And, you know, I, I'm really enjoying it. I hope you guys are enjoying this too. Um, let me know how you guys feel about this, whether, um, you know, what you guys think about some of the thoughts I had on, um, you know, Korra and like Tenzin and that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, I had a really good time. I hope you guys did too. Please like and subscribe and I will see you all next time. Stay cozy.